I thought he was just a lousy landscaper, but the more I dug in, the dirtier this guy looked. And it's certainly not because he completed anybody's jobs. When we go through this thing, I'm literally going to blow your mind. Okay. I All right, I'm ready to have I'm my good. mind blown. Brother, I'm ready to. Say hi to Joe Vella. I've been waiting to have a voice. I need to have a voice. Well, you got a voice right now. I hear you, sir. I just don't know what I can and can't say. Joe is a delightful defendant. This lighthearted landscaper's got a ton of problems. Jovial Joe's got angry customers. He's just a horrible, horrible person. Joe's got giant judgments, felony criminal charges. He claims he's broke. It appears the guy might have filed for bankruptcy. What do you think of that? It sucks. Joe's facing foreclosure, and even claims he's been beat up. But Joe's still smiling. We gotta get into this, man. We gotta sit down and do this together. Okay. This all right. All right, Joe. It's gonna be amazing, brother. Get ready for the story of happy-go-lucky landscaper Joe, a big fan. Hey, you're just as famous as he is, sir. It's uh, good to see you guys. Thank all you. right. Thank you, Rob. Good luck in there. That is a weird dude. This is Reggie. Back in April, I interviewed him about a company he hired to tear out this patio at his Canton home and build him a new one. The company was EMS. The guy in charge, Joe Vella. He came out in a company vehicle, so he just everything just seemed legit. Reggie paid Joe several thousand dollars as a down payment in the late summer of 2020. On September 9th, Joe texted and said, your house next, we're almost finished. Reggie replies, I can't wait. Oh yes, he could wait, and he did wait. On October 27th, Reggie texted, good afternoon, Joe. I'm sure you're aware of the inaccurate time frames you've been giving us regarding the completion of our project. Joe responds, hey, Reggie, I'll have your landscaping done and your concrete done in the next two weeks. Not in May of 2021, Reggie sued. I won a judgment in the amount of $5,168.38. Needless to say, he didn't pay me or else you wouldn't be here right now. He was supposed to tear down the deck and build a patio. Jerry gave EMS a four grand down payment, but never got a thing from Joe, so he sued. He never showed up. I won the judgment automatically, and but now the hard part is getting your money back. It gets worse. And I said, Joe, you owe me $67,000, where's my money? Before I introduce you to Mike, I think he's the ultimate con man. Yet another let down landscaping victim. Let me show you some of the weird stuff that happened when I tried to track down Joe. He was hard to locate, but we finally found him at this house in Howell. That's his white truck. And we saw it leave one day to go to a liquor store. But Joe's not in the truck. I'm his friend David. You're his friend David? Yeah. You know where Joe is? I uh, know I don't, sir. I guess David is just a dude. Is he at his house right now? I have no idea. I've never been there. You haven't been to his house? No. That's a lie. So we head over to Joe's. Is your dad here? Will you tell your dad to come out? For the next two hours, my cameraman and I wait in 85 degree July heat for Joe to come out. Hey, here comes his buddy. Joe's truck returns. Hey, David, will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Will you tell Joe to come out and talk to me? Okay. He goes in to talk to Joe, then comes out. What's he say? He give you a call. What's that? He said he'd give you a call. He'd give me a call? Well, why is he going to give me a call? Why doesn't he just come out and talk to me, man? I don't know. In to talk to Joe again and out. Back in and back out. Okay, so what's he saying now? Finally, Joe agrees to meet us the next day at a church picnic area in Howell. So you're going to deliver him tomorrow, 3.30. The next day, we wait and wait, but we get valid. He's a no-show. The next day, Joe texts me. Hi, Rob. Just wanted to update you. My father had a heart attack. Ah, poor Joe. I'll give the guy some time. In the meantime, I talk to Mike. He comes there with full intentions of ripping you off. And I think that makes him a special kind of individual. Mike hired Joe to build a seawall and deck on the water behind his home. How much money did you ultimately give him? 60, just shy of 67,000. He says Joe used a backhoe to move a bunch of dirt around, but never really accomplished anything except digging a hole. All in all, it probably took about five or six weeks till we started to realize that there was a real scam going on here. Mike finally confronted Joe. He basically left 
and didn't come back. But it gets even worse. Look at all these giant checks a company called Prestige Freight wrote out to Joe's company. According to their lawsuit, this trucking company paid Joe's business almost $400,000 to fix up one of their yards. The lawsuit says Joe kept putting the work off for six months. Then, one day in June 2021, defendants appeared on the work site and moved some dirt and dumped several trucks of gravel on the site. After that day in June 2021, no other work or services have been performed by the defendants. Prestige Freight sued for fraud. They won a default judgment for $1,139,000 against Joe and his business partner wife, Catherine. Catherine is listed as the resident agent for the company, even though Joe does all the talking. And you already know he's good at that. I want to get into it, Rob. I do. Uh, Rob, this yeah, is I don't, I don't think you want to get... I don't Are think you kidding you... me? This is the best platform to get into it. Joe and his wife filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy late last year. Poor Joe broken her yeah take a look at this video maybe joe injured himself trying to finish those landscaping jobs fell off a backhoe or fell in a hole installing a sprinkler system nope but he might have been making it rain joe got hurt at a strip club According to Joe's lawsuit against BT's executive club, Joe got roughed up by a bouncer and he's suing. On or around April 29th, 2022, defendant John Doe, the bouncer, used unnecessary, unprovoked, and excessive force on plaintiff while he was a patron at BT's during normal business hours. Man, can a guy who filed for bankruptcy and is out on bond have a nice day at the strip club? Joe's on bond because in December, Joe was charged criminally in Livingston County with three counts of felony non-sufficient checks and one count of taking more than $50,000 under false pretenses. And it's before a court date, I finally catch up to Joe. Great story, I'd love to tell it. I really would, Rob, you know. Uh... Well, let's hear it. Joe says he can't talk until his lawyer gets here. Here's his lawyer. But Joe swears he's got a great story to tell. You took in so much sure. money. What did you do with the money? Okay. Um, I'd love to go over that as well, Rob. I start mentioning some of his victims. They're not even related to this court case. Certainly Joe could talk about them. The first guy I talked to was a guy named Reggie. Do you remember him? No, sir. In Canton? But Joe doesn't remember all the people he's victimized. Do you remember Mike the Aussie guy? Mike, he's an Australian guy. I talked to him, too. Great. He says, basically, you're a con artist who took his money. Sure. And what do you say? I say that's absolutely 100% not true, and I can prove it. Well, prove it. Hey, I've given Joe lots of chances to talk. Remember how he stood me up a few months ago? We waited for you at the park that day, and you didn't show up. Yeah. And you said that your dad had a heart attack and I all that. I never said that to you, sir. Joe. I have the text. I watched every single video of mm -hmm. yours, right? Mm -hmm. I watched them all. I get it. It's shock and awe value. But I think there's another value. And I think that value is when you have a case like this, at the end of it, you say they're in the hall of shame. Mm -hmm. I think there's an opportunity here for maybe somebody who's been accused of things to make things, to, to show their side of the story. Okay. As, you, as you said, you would always hear my side of the story. All right, Joe. Well, I'm ready. Well, I'm, ready. I'm, I'm standing here with a microphone and a cameraman. I hear you. His lawyer, William Amadeo, shows up. Hey, he's not going to talk today. Come on, let's go to court. All right. Okay. Uh, All right, hang Joe. Hang tight till the end. Hang tight till the end. After court, Joe still won't tell me this great story. He's just dying to get off his chest. I can't talk about it, okay? We'll okay. Right after. Are we'll people going to get their money back? Joe, get in the car. Okay. 30 days. 30 days, Rob. Let me meet you here. Okay. You seem like you're a little more agitated now, Joe. Well, you're following him as he's leaving court, Rob. Yeah, that's my job. Thank you very much. Joe, you're in. The Hall of Shame. Now, I contacted BTs about Joe's strip club lawsuit. They didn't get back to me. Joe's attorney sent me an email saying Joe had an abundance of money stolen by others that, and filed reports to that effect. One report was filed in October of 2020. That was two months before Joe started cashing those giant checks from Prestige Freight, so it wasn't their money the thieves got. Joe's attorney also says things are being done to have all parties reimbursed. He didn't say what things. Joe's next court date on those criminal charges is in October.